there's been a lot of violence recently over in Ireland because it's marching season and the Orange Order are marching to commemorate the victory at the Battle of the Boyne of King William of Orange, the Protestant king from Holland, over King James, a Catholic king from England. Oh, he, might, he might have been Scottish. He was certainly British anyway. So 300 years later and more, this battle is still causing problems for Irish people. It still evokes bigotry and sectarianism. And they are seen as provocations when the Orange Order marched through predominantly Catholic areas in the north. However, across the border in counties like Donegal and other places in the Republic, there are times when the ancient order of Hibernians, a Catholic fraternity, will march alongside the Orange Order and the two sides will respect each other and there's no bigotry and there's no violence and they treat each other as equals. And perhaps if Ireland had never been partitioned, then we could have seen orange marches like that up and down the country, all across the island of Ireland. But down the line, in the future, there will be a need to respect the orange order within a united Ireland. And they, they bang on about being British and they, they want to fly the Union Jack. There's nothing wrong with being of a British background or seeing yourself as having a British identity within a united Ireland, within being an Irish citizen. I mean, they're not actually from Britain anyway. If you read the passport, the country is called the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland is not part of Britain, and it never has been, but it is still within the jurisdiction of the United Kingdom. And if you feel that you are British, then that is your right. And that is enshrined in the Good Friday Agreement. And down the line, that will have to be respected within a united Ireland. But you can't be a member of the Loyal Orange Lodge of Ireland and perhaps the Church of Ireland and be born on the island of Ireland and deny that you are Irish. That is one aspect one layer of your identity. And identities can be multi-layered, multifaceted, and it's my hope that down the line, in a united island, that all sections of all communities on the island will respect each other. And the myth that home rule would mean Rome rule, this was the fear a hundred years ago when home rule was being debated in Parliament. It's surely been proven wrong now, given the fact that in the Republic, gay marriage, or rather equal marriage, has been accepted in law, and abortion has also been legalised in the Republic. I mean, the north of Ireland, the six counties, is still lagging behind in that sense, where abortion is still illegal and gay marriage is still illegal. So Ireland has changed, and the future of a free united, independent Ireland has changed too. And it's time to decide what type of Ireland do we want? The united Ireland is on the way. But how is it going to look? And I hope it will be inclusive, it will be accepting, and it will be a beacon of light for the rest of Europe of how a, a modern country can transcend sectarianism and the old-fashioned type of nationalism that thought your ethnicity and your nationality must be the same. Two diametrically opposed societies came together and enjoyed each other's colours and each other's stories.